Hey everyone, I'm gonna tell you about the most cursed and disturbing music in popular games. I'm sure you've heard a game song that was weird, but these are just creepy and downright disturbing in some cases. Of course, everybody's opinions are gonna be different, but I think most of you can agree that these songs are just a little bit off in most cases. I've always found it crazy that one person can find a song soothing and calm and another can find it creepy and weird, but honestly, I guess that's just the beauty of art. Let's get right into the video. Also, thank you guys so much for the recent support. Liking my videos, dropping a comment, maybe even joining my Discord. It really helps me out and I appreciate it, so I thank all of you guys. The Dark Interloopers Zelda is a series that many people love, especially after Breath of the Wild on the Switch. But if you haven't played the older games, basically Twilight Princess has an infamous scene that's known for being basically the most disturbing cutscene in the entire Zelda franchise. The protagonist, Link, is faced with his dark side. Dark Link. You would have never guessed, right? and he ends up getting destroyed by all three of them. All throughout this, the previously mentioned song starts to play, called The Dark Inner Loopers, and it just adds so much to the environment. You really feel the tension building up until Link just disappears, just into thin air, but even weirder, his eyes start to roll back, and he starts screaming uncontrollably, where the music just gets louder and louder and more dramatic until eventually fading into somebody's mysterious laughter. Quite the weird one if you ask me. It's a very nice cutscene. It's uh, there's there's nothing really wrong with it. Kind of feels like somebody's trapping me in a room type. Sh I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he running like? <sighs> oh nah, bro. What? Black Link. Oh yeah, nah, yeah, nah. So it looks like one of those Indian videos you see on TikTok, and you can't even <laughs> make out what the. F is. <laughs> Prayer. Silent Hill is a horror-based game, so obviously it makes sense that there are gonna be some, you know, scary, creepy, ominous tracks in there. But in my opinion, this one kind of tops most horror game music and is just literally insane. And it really captures the feeling of being scared by a piece of media. Like, the whole Silent Hill franchise is really good at scaring you, basically. This particular track, Prayer, plays when you are fighting the fourth boss in Silent Hill 3 and features creepy vocals, tons of reverb, random sound effects, and what sounds like a monster who is saying random stuff into the mic. Or for all I know, it could just be some crazy spell and uh, we're all doomed. Drought. Pokemon has definitely had its fair share of questionable music through the years, especially after there being like dozens of games in the franchise. But many people think that Lavender Town is the biggest offender of this, which came from Pokemon Blue and Red and Pokemon Green in Japan. These were all Game Boy games and you can see why it's off-putting. It uses high-pitched noises called chip tones and descending musical chords that make you uncomfortable. But 18 years later, when Pokemon Omega Ruby came out on the 3DS, people were kind of surprised to hear that there was an updated version of this song. Just literally 10 times more disturbing than the original. It uses a low-pitched bass and tons of reverb, and it just sounds very ominous. For a lot of people that played the original Pokemon Red or Blue when they were a kid, this probably scared them, like, a lot because they might have just had some bad memories of this game as a kid, and then when they heard, like, a scarier, deeper remix that maybe just ignited some sort of PTSD. And yeah, the visuals just complemented this game so well. Lavender Town is one of the only places in Pokemon that deal with death. Its main attraction is, um, it's a graveyard. How nice, right? This makes the vibe even more creepy, and there was an internet rumor from the 2010s that said that the original song made many kids suffer hearing injuries and much worse, if you get what I mean, from the high-pitched noises in the song. Thankfully, those were not true, and they were just internet rumors, so yeah, that's good. Ill Yourself. Cry of Fear was popular around 2013 due to getting some coverage from popular YouTubers at the time. It's a free first-person horror game on Steam and it honestly features one of the craziest tracks I've ever heard. This game is about a 19 year old who gets attacked by monsters after being hit by a car. You later find out that the monsters were just coming from the guy's head and they weren't actually real. But either way, this song genuinely sounds like somebody is having an anxiety attack, just bass boosted and with scary chords in the background. What's even crazier is this song is called Ill Yourself. Just take a listen to this one and I hope you're not in a dark room like I am right now
KK Synth and Hypno KK. Starting with KK Synth, this track was first introduced in the 3DS version of Animal Crossing, where you could hear it in some of your villagers' houses. It's a really slow paced yet robotic song that just feels very uneasy. I think it's due to the fact that it sounds both natural and artificial. In my opinion, the background of this song sounds very realistic and it can be played by a human, but the actual notes um, sound just very, you know, robotic, and that's because it was made on a computer with an instrument virtually called a synth. And that fact combined with a creepy house that you were able to visit from the internet called Ica Village makes the vibe really unsettling. Just take a listen and look at the visuals. Ain't this game for kids? Oh, this is the Wii version. Avatar? I swear Stunts has that. What the f? Oh, this is wild. This is me. What? What is this music, bro? So you stuck in a place and it just keeps repeating and you don't know what the f is going on. No. <laughs> yeah. hey, bro. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it an 8 because I'm scared of dolls. I'm, I'm gonna give it a 9. Hypno KK is also a weird song, but it's ironic because they were actually going for a vibe that you could fall asleep to, which listening to it, I don't know how they came to that conclusion, but whatever. I personally hear it being way more dark and sinister. I mean, what do you guys think? Is this creepy or calming? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm just crazy. Sayonara. Doki Doki Literature Club is a visual novel game released on Steam in 2017. It definitely isn't a game for everyone. Personally, I've never really been able to play these types of games because I don't really find them too interesting. But from what I can see, there is a very immersive scene that completely scared the crap out of everybody that played it. I'm going to have to blur out most of this scene because there's some not so nice contents uh, involving a rope, if you get what I mean. But yeah, this distorted music starts playing as soon as the cutscene plays, which is creepy because it takes the main game's basic theme song and changes it from happy and uplifting to scary and distorted. This is the regular song. And this is the song that plays in this creepy scene. And yeah, the song changes from distorted in the beginning, transitioning to out-of-key bells with reverbed vocals that make it even more uncomfortable. I've seen people that were really messed up after this scene and just straight up called it a day after witnessing this. I bet. What the f***? <laughs> what? So f***ing dark. What? And then like the music like... Yeah, the music that just is weird. so disturbing, bro. Yeah, nah, dude. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. This song, I give it a, a six. This is a ten. This is a ten. Yeah, I think this is like the top of the. It's top tier, top tier, fucking disturbing. Disc 13 and 14. I'm sure you've played the popular horror game, um, Minecraft. Besides from all those nostalgic memories of me playing Minecraft on my Xbox 360, there were definitely some more creepy ones. Like the music in Minecraft is so powerful. I'm sure you immediately recognize the calming track being played in the background as we speak. That being said, the music could also be used to drive mad anxiety into the player. And it doesn't help that my Xbox 360 was in my basement that was cold and there was a flickering light in the back of the basement which would make me look over my shoulder every 5 minutes. But in specific, disc 11 and 13 are definitely the weirdest and they're still a huge mystery because no official explanation has been made by Mojang in Minecraft's 13 plus years. You can find these discs in various places in the game and play them by crafting a jukebox. And if you haven't heard of these songs prior to playing the disc, You'll, you'll be in for a treat and be surprised to hear how eerie it is. Just listen to the reverb of track 13 combined with its low frequencies. Disc 11 is considered to be even creepier because there's clearly somebody running away from something as they're really heavily breathing. I mean, yeah, it could just be Steve getting a midnight snack, but it's probably much more sinister than that. Playroom's music. Shadow Man was an N64, PlayStation 1, and Dreamcast game that was released back in the 90s and then remastered in 2021. It's an action-adventure game that was based off a comic book series, and there's one level in particular that still haunts many players to this day. The Playrooms is what I'm talking about. All throughout the level, you're in a dark dungeon that you have to progress towards. Once you reach the end, there's a seemingly innocent playroom which is bright and colorful, however, the creepy music from 
from the beginning continues into this innocent room. This basically makes you not feel satisfied at all and it still makes you feel that there's something bad about to happen and something weird going on combined with the fact that there's screaming and crying in the background of the track. There's also a rubber duck being squished, and the song eventually transitions from happy to mysterious and back again. I mean, it's just having a joyride of emotions, it just will not stop. No, I think it's I think it's disturbing. It's not scary, but it's hella disturbing. Guy Goss. Earthbound, or known as Mother 2 in Japan, was released in 1994 on the Super Nintendo. It's another role-playing game, and it's interesting because it was rated kids to adults, the equivalent of E for everyone today, but was changed when it was re-released on the Wii U. They changed it to T for teens, which probably should have been the rating all along, even though I know most people, including you guys, probably don't really even pay attention to that. But anyway, yeah, let's jump back to this music track, and it plays particularly when you're in a certain boss battle. I mean, this song is literally a jump scare. Halfway through the song, there's a random loud noise that switches the track from happy, and it's basically a lullaby, to a scary ambience. And within this one track, the tone and mood basically changes four different times, going from mysterious, to happy, to scary, to back again. I mean, this just isn't the type of game where you would expect to have a literal jump scare in the middle of a boss battle, and it's kind of crazy that kids actually played this game. Boss Music Sonic CD was a Sega CD game released in 1993, and it's notorious for having many differences between the Japanese and North American version. The main difference is the music especially, which is largely changed in the American release. And for a game that's supposed to be played by kids, Sega did some really interesting things. One of these interesting things was to put basically horror music in the game. During the boss battles in Sonic CD, this song can be heard, with the creepiest part being the ominous laughter during the battle. Personally, if I heard this as a young kid, I, I would be really scared. And yeah, I've heard the Japanese version is much more like realistic, and I'm not really sure why they couldn't have kept the music from there, but it is what it is. Oh yeah, no, nah, this one was wild. Cause usually it'd be like amped up music in the back and then he's just like laughing and shit. I feel like this this song is just so weird, like especially especially when he's laughing though. Who are you? Seriously, who who are you? Hit the like button. In Final Fantasy VII, there is a mysterious room that you can go into that plays a very disturbing song. This is one of the lesser talked about songs on this list, but I think it's just as disturbing as the others. Coming out in 1997 on the PlayStation 1, Final Fantasy VII was a role-playing game, and it featured a lot of different lore. This particular scene that I'm talking about was actually optional and not required to beat the story, so some of you that played it might not even remember it. But yeah, here you go into this mysterious room, and there's happy music leading up to the event, so, you know, it, it doesn't seem like anything is wrong. Then all of a sudden, there's just this high-pitched screech, which is scary, and there's a flash on screen accompanied by musical notes that switch between high and low frequencies. Cloud, the main character, sees a ghost and ends up passing out on the floor after thinking about his previous decisions in life. What a vibe! Then, while he's unconscious, the text on the screen says, you can't change anything by just sitting back and looking at it. Before being slapped back to consciousness and nothing really explained why that happened. Looping Stairs. You probably didn't expect expect to see a Mario game on this list, but here it is. A series known to be enjoyed by kids all around the world also scared them half to death in 1996 on the Nintendo 64. As you climb these big red stairs, if you don't have 70 stars collected, then Mario will infinitely run in a straight line. The game is actually putting like an invisible barrier between Mario so he can't go forward, but you are able to do a glitch to get over this barrier literally by just jumping backwards. Anyway, most people didn't didn't know that in the 90s and were met with this terrifying soundtrack when they were trying to run up the stairs without 70 stars. The chords slowly increasing in pitch is what makes it scary and it literally makes it so that it sounds like the tension is building forever. Like I've never really heard a song where it just sounds like it's just building up and up and then never drops. And yeah, it actually fits the scene very well because you're not really supposed to get up the stairs. And shout out to my boy who did a 24 hour stream of just listening to this. Damn, I actually held in my piss this long too, that's kind of insane. Title Screen Theme Song 
This one stems all the way back in the Super Nintendo days, and uh, it seems like a lot of these disturbing tracks are scarier in the older games. Maybe it's the fact that there's a lack of creativity, or we've already just heard everything that's, you know, been able to be done in these scary games. Anyway, this one is kind of crazy because as soon as the game is played, the first thing you hear is this. And this is before game ratings were set up, so many kids actually bought this game not knowing how scary the Metroid games are. They don't have any jump scares either, the developers just crafted an amazing ambience and atmosphere that made it very scary, and the music really helped with that as demonstrated by this one. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching until the end. I'm sure you'll like my video on the bad games iceberg here, or you can, you know, maybe click on my most recent upload here. Make sure to drop a like, comment, sub. I love all you guys, I'm out. Hey, yeah, I'm a, oh yeah, I ever been. Yeah. I wanna do no